Greetings, Zero here. Welcome back to the Seal Monotype run of EV Emerald. Last time, well, we did some stuff in the desert of Route 111. Now, however, it's time to conclude the game's second act by obtaining our fifth gym badge and the ability to use Surf. The long foreshadowed throwdown with our dad has come at last. But before we get to him, there's a bunch of trainers on our way. We don't have to beat them all. But we are going to beat them all. Because again, once, you, once you've beaten the gym, that's it. You can't fight them again. So, each one of these rooms has a trainer with a specific gimmick. In this case, well... It's about a Pokemon that's very fast, but that's not going to help him. But you'll have others like high defense, recovery, uh, critical hits, things like that. We'll go back and do all the other rooms as we go along. Yeah, but, of course, there's one flaw with your strategy, sweetheart. You still only have so many power points. Or hit points, rather. So, eventually, well, if you don't do enough damage, you're still going to be knocked out before I am. And that goes doubly so when you're using a normal type and I'm using a steel type. Oh. <laughs> Never mind. That won't save you, bitch. Nope, they were not. Now let's heal you up real quick. Got a whole bunch of potions, might as well burn these. Never mind, you're full. Alright, next room. Well, hmm. if there's one thing I can say about Norman, he doesn't seem to believe in nepotism. Wish I could say the same about some former bosses of mine. Oh gee, I'm so scared. Unless you got a ground or fire type move, I really don't care. It's irrelevant because you don't get to use it anyway. Okay. Yep, you did. They didn't do jack shit for you. Now, ordinarily, this would be the point where you'd be able to fight the gym leader, but we're not going to do that. We're going to go back about some of the other trainers. Be right back. Okay, so we're back here, and this time, we're facing the Confusion Specialist. Okay, do I want to use... Eh, yeah, we'll, we'll switch.
Okay, well, if you know Focus Punch, I'm def- Next move, I'm definitely not gonna be using a move that can miss. And down you go. You didn't confuse my team at all! Okay, we'd already been through here. Okay, so let's start going back the other way. Okay, for this one, I definitely want to switch back to Batang because otherwise this bitch is probably going to spam Sand Attack. Oh, never mind, it's her accuracy, not mine. Or maybe it's both, we'll see. Well, GG. Okay. Oh, we'd already been in here. Mm -hmm. And this is guy, I think that's a slack off. Which, well, that's not going to do you a whole lot of good, dude, because you can only move every other turn. Now, if he had a Slack King, like your dad does, then I might be a little worried. Ooh. Alright, let's see if I can paralyze you. Nope, never mind. And down you go. Fun fact! In Generation 1, counter only worked if your opponent used a normal or a fighting type attack. This functionally made it useless. Although it still wasn't the worst move in Gen 1. That was probably Focus Energy. Which, rather than increasing your critical hit ratio, actually decreased it. Although, because of the way the game handled crits, sometimes that was actually to your benefits, because critical hits also ignored any stat boosts you got. One hit KO, huh? Yeah, I'd like to see you do that against a Steel type. Yeah, a whole lot of good that did you. It's pretty unfair to them if you think about it. I mean, I'm pretty much set up to hard counter this gym's type. Although, let's see. I think there might be one more trainer. Let's just double check. I mean, you might think, oh, well, no, ghost type is the hard counter. No, it isn't. Not really. Yeah, we've beaten everyone. Okay, so I will be right back after I heal. And we're back! It's time.
I should note that's probably not true. It's theorized that gym leaders probably use different teams depending on the experience level of their opponent. If he really was going all out, he wouldn't have a chance even at this stage. Of course, his team is also a bit tougher than it is in Ruby Sa and Sapphire. Where in Ruby and Sapphire, he has two Slack King and a Vigoroth. In this one, it's, well, Spinda, Vigoroth, Slack King, and Linoon. And it's actually Linoon you gotta worry about. Oh, wait. Never mind. I have the Yellow Flute. That was the whole point of grinding for it. That's how I got my Shiny Spinda. Okay. You know this item can be reused indefinitely, right? We're going to continue this exercise until you give up. Down you go! We're going to try and boost our attack power with Metal Claw. A lot of good that did you. And there goes Vigoroth. Now up comes Slacking. Now Slacking, of course, it can only attack every other turn, but don't let that fool you. Because Slacking has stats on par with Groudon and Kyogre. The true ability was a balancing effort. Now, of course, you may think, well, so what? You can only attack every other turn. That's kind of besides the point, because it'll still hit really damn hard. Like that. And, uh, you know what? We're just gonna heal real quick. Uh, but... Also, there's one way you can render that weakness irrelevant. And that... is to use Hyper Beam. Bear in mind, Hyper Beam is physical in this generation. And on top of that, you get the same ta same type attack bonus, or same type attack bonus, rather. So, basically, you're looking at an attack with 225 base power. With some of the highest attack power in the entire game. Oh, I guess I skipped your turn. But the point is, slacking can be really, really scary if you set it up right. Oh, that could be bad, because I think it knows Focus Punch. Come on. I know if, it, of course, if I'm wrong, it knows facade. It paralyzes. Well, that could be a that could be a boost for it. But for now, loot flute, the polka flute that we ordered off of Wish.com, works just as well as the real deal. Yeah, this is taking a while just because of how ridiculously tanky slacking is. I think at this point I should probably just alternate between Confusion and Metal Claw. That way you can't use Counter. There's a chance I get the attack boost, the Metal Claw. Nope. And down goes Slacking. And this just leaves one last Pokémon. Arguably his most dangerous. Linoon. Oh, we got Psychic. Sweet. Ah, fuck it. We're never gonna use Pursuit. 
Not never again, anyway. It's just too weak for this stage of the game. But the reason why his line unit is so dangerous is because of one move in particular, Belly Drum. He trades half his hit points for a massive boost in attack power. Like that. So, basically he's going to hit like a truck with every move. Unless I knock him out first. And there goes the battle. We get the bounce badge. And TM42 facade. Oh, and by the way, that damage boost for facade, that stacks with the same with the boost applied by the guts ability. So if you stick it on a Pokemon like, say, Swellow, that has guts, and it's, say, poisoned or burned. Well, one, guts negates the attack drop from burns, so burns are like to being poisoned for it. This means you're going to be hitting with, I think, I forget, is it the same type of attack bonus that applies first, or is it boost from facade? It might be, well, either way, it'd be about a 180 damage, 180 base power attack. Thereabouts. And we got Surf, which opens up most of the rest of the map. We'll just teach it real quick to something. And I think we'll wrap it up here, ladies and gentlemen. Next time, we're going to be acquiring the next member of our team, Magnemite. So if you like what you see, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, maybe check out my Rumble page, and I will see you all next time.